Are you confused by sewing patterns? Then this video is for you. Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects. If you're new here, we've been doing a series called Learn to Sew in 2020, aimed at true beginners to the sewing world. So if that's you, I hope you join me here because we've been having a lot of fun. And I wanted to focus on common sewing techniques found in sewing patterns. A lot of you out there want to sew clothes. I don't sew garments a lot and I consider myself more of an advanced beginner in this particular area. So I'm still kind of a newbie myself. So I thought I would take a sewing pattern that I'm personally working on and walk you through the steps in this pattern. This is Butterick B6688. It's a women's blouse. And even if you're not working on this particular pattern, a lot of the instructions are gonna be found in other similar patterns. So I hope this can be a resource for you. Let's jump right in. Sewing a regular seam. You'll need to know how to sew a standard 5 8 inch seam allowance for most patterns. Place your fabric right sides together and pin every few inches. Normally I keep the stitch length between 2 and 2.5. There is a purple sewing edge stopper at the correct distance from the needle. Sew with a straight stitch with a few back stitches to keep the thread from unraveling. Remove the pins and don't sew over them. That can lead to needle breakage and damage the pins. Using a seam gauge, I can actually double check that I really did sew a 5 8 inch seam. Because I'll be hemming the bottom of this shirt, I pressed the seam open. There are many ways to finish the seam allowance. That's the excess fabric, but my preferred method is to serge the edges. It's quick and looks neat. Pressing open also reduces bulk at the seam. Quick and easy narrow hem. This is my go-to method for a quick and easy narrow hem. First, I serge the raw edge of the fabric. Using the serged section as sort of a guide, start folding the fabric in and press. Do this for the entire length. I find this to be much faster than trying to measure and press. Fold over again and press. The serged portion should be hidden at this point. To finish the hem, top stitch about a quarter inch in from the edge. If you want the stitches to blend in, use a coordinating color thread that matches the fabric. Make sure the stitching catches the folds of the hem on the underside. This method can also be used for sleeves. Gathering fabric. Typically the instructions call for gathering between two pattern markings. I've done this a lot and have found this way to work the best for me. Run two rows of basting stitches within a 5 8 inch seam allowance, like at a quarter inch and a half inch so these stitches won't show after you sew up the item. Hold the two threads on top and pull the fabric gently to create the gathers. To keep it from coming apart, I'll tie the thread together at each side on both top and bottom. With this shoulder seam, I matched up the sides to check that they're the same length. I'm sure there are other ways to do this, this is just one method. Applying a facing. The front of this blouse has a split neck with a facing. I already interfaced it and finished the raw edge on the serger. Both the facing and front piece are marked, and a pin can help you line up the exact points. Right sides together, sew a standard seam on the neckline, and sew right on the marked V line in the center.
carefully cut right down the middle, stopping before the stitch line. Also clip the corners. Flip right side out and press into place. From personal experience, I can say it's a good idea to apply some fray check on the raw edges you cut, especially on the areas closest to the V. Understitching and slip stitching. This pattern has a lined yoke piece, which I'll be demonstrating two techniques on, understitching and sewing a slip stitch by hand. Fold in the shoulder and bottom seams 5 eighths of an inch and press. Using a seam gauge, check your measurements. Trim down these sections to about 3 eighths of an inch. Pin right sides together at the neckline. Sew a standard 5 eighths inch seam. With pinking shears, I trim down the seam allowance to help prevent fraying. Understitching involves sewing the seam allowance to the lining or facing. It keeps the lining or facing from rolling to the outside, and the stitches are on the inside of the garment so they're not seen. At the sewing machine, make sure the seam allowance is flipped to the side the facing is, and stitch about an eighth inch away from the original seam. Here's what the inside looks like. The yoke facing is what I sewed the seam allowance to, so there's a second row of stitching right past the seam. Hand sewing the yoke piece to the front of the blouse gives it a neater finish. Using a needle and the same matching thread, we're doing the slip stitch. Insert and run the needle through the fold of the fabric, then catch a tiny amount of the fabric on the other side. Repeat this for the entire length of the yoke pieces. The stitches will be pretty discreet. Setting in sleeves. Okay, moving on to sleeves. This part of sewing a pattern can be absolutely maddening, but I'm going to share a few small things I do to help ease the frustration. Most patterns have three dot markings on the cap area, in the very center and then on both sides. Baste stitch three rows within the 5 8 inch seam allowance on the cap. Hold the three threads on top and pull the fabric gently to create subtle gathers. Doing this will help ease the sleeve into the arm's eye or armhole. Right sides together, pin the sleeve ends. Sew with the standard 5 8 inch seam, back stitching at the beginning and end. Press the seam open. Finish the seam allowance, I'm doing it on my serger. Pin the sleeve to the arm's eye, right sides together matching up any markings. When you go to sew this, if your sewing machine has a free arm, take advantage of it to fit your arm's eye all around it. Go slow and do your best to shift the pieces so there's no puckering. But in all likelihood, there will still be some puckering when you flip it right side out. You can go back and try to fix this. Turn it back inside out and seam rip any small sections with puckers. Re-sew with the gathered part on top and try to flatten it out as you go. There may still be some puckering, but I'm okay with it not being a 100% perfect. Finally, to clean up the seam allowance, I'm running it through the serger. See, that wasn't so bad, right? I really do find that when you just take the instructions, read carefully, and literally break it down step by step, I find the pattern is a lot more approachable. I really take my time. I don't rush my sewing at all. This took me about three days between the cutting and the construction, and overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Obviously, I'm, I'm wearing it, and I think in a future video, I will be doing more of an in-depth review of this pattern, so if that's something you'd like to see, let me know below in the comments. Also, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button and subscribe to this channel, The Sewing Report. I plan to do a lot more beginner sewing videos, so I hope you will come along for the ride. Anyways, I'm Jen with The Sewing Report. I'll see you guys again in the next video.